up guys, it's Will here from WTF Car Reviews and today we're gonna to be reviewing this all new 2021 Mazda CX-5 Signature. All right guys, before we start, I just wanna give a huge thank you to Tyrone Square Mazda here in St. Petersburg, Florida for making this review possible. These guys have a really kind staff. I recommend anybody in the Florida area to come check these guys out if you're looking for a new car and I'll leave all their information below. So for those of you guys who don't know, the CX-5 is Mazda's compact SUV and it's been around since 2012, but this is the second generation CX-5 which was released in 2016. Uh, so for the first generation, we had a standard two liter four cylinder engine, which made about 154 horsepower with an optional 2.5 liter four cylinder, which made 184 horsepower. But for the second generation, this is the top level trim uh, released in 2021, all new trim. And this vehicle has a two and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, and it's very powerful. It's going to make about 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. And that's what, that's what this vehicle is all about. It's why you're gonna be choosing this over the competition, simply because of its power plant and driving dynamics. But as far as the exterior, let's jump right in. So up front, you're gonna notice right away, we got our projector beam um, LED headlights. And these are gonna be moving. So as you turn the steering wheel, these do adapt to the road. So you also have LED daytime running lights in the center. Those are really nice. We'll check them out once we start this car. But I like how this chrome trim integrates and it's not the most shot that bird over there is going crazy but this chrome trim uh it is a little bit smoked it's not gonna be the shiniest most reflective chrome trim and as you notice down here you got your front parking sensors and this vehicle has full 360 sensing we'll check that out once we go inside but down here you can also see you got your led fog lights nice that this vehicle offers that not a lot of vehicles come with fog lights anymore and you can see your parking sensors all around the front but we'll take a little step back and check out this gorgeous grill. This is probably my favorite part of the exterior on the CX-5. You got your really large Mazda badge, and this is gonna be where your advanced safety features are gonna be housed. But as far as the grill itself, it's really beautiful. I like how it matches the overall design of the Mazda wings. And as you come close, you're gonna see that you got quite a bit of airflow. No, this part up top is gonna be blocked off. But as we come down over here, you can see we do get additional airflow for your intercooler. But that's about it for the exterior. We'll take a step back. You guys can check out the front styling. And if you guys can notice, this red paint is really beautiful. It's gonna be a three coat paint. It's gonna have two layers of crystals for this metallic. One as an absorbent, one as a reflector. And it looks really beautiful. I hope you guys can pick it up in the sun, but let's check out this wheel and tire setup. And you're gonna see that this vehicle does have hand polished rims. They're not gonna be a shiny silver. They look really, really good. Very nice rim design, truly gorgeous. They are 19 inch rims. They're gonna be wrapped in 225-55 R19 Toyo 836 all season tires. So no, not the widest setup, but with this all wheel drive system, it should work very well. And as you can see all around the bottom of this vehicle and all surrounding this wheel well, you're gonna have a little bit of plastic. So when you are gonna be off in off-road situations like we are right now, we're not gonna be taking it hard on these rocks. Obviously we're not gonna be throwing rocks into this vehicle, but um, for people that do do that, it's nice that you're not gonna have to worry about really damaging your paint. But let's take a step over here, check out these mirrors. You are gonna have your turn signals on the side over here. And this glass is really large. It's gonna fill up this frame really well. And you are gonna have blind spot monitoring. But over here, you do have touch sensors, smart access for your driver and a front passenger. No smart access for the rear, but not really expected. As far as the window sticker, uh, we are gonna have some pretty dark tints back here. You guys can see me reflected pretty well, but you're not gonna see the window sticker very well. I'll try to position it so you guys can take a pause, check out all the standard equipment, and I'll just name off some of the impressive, important features. So over here, you're gonna have your two and a half liter turbocharged engine. Um, so I apologize for the mistake. It only makes 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. I guess it's detuned compared to the CX-30 uh, carbon edition, but anyway, you can see the rest of your uh, features. You got your front ventilator brakes. You got solid disc brakes in the rear, 19 inch rims, uh, Napa leather seats. Those are really beautiful, really comfortable. It's gonna be nice to check those out. Uh, you got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You got a 36,000 mile warranty, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, of course, tire pressure monitoring systems, uh, rear, cross tra rear cross traffic alert, smart city brake support in reverse, uh, independent front and rear suspension, electric power assisted steering, so on and so forth. You got all the safety features you could ever want. LED headlights, um, automatic on and off. You got adaptive front, light, um, front lighting. You got rain sensing wipers too. 10.25 uh, inch color display. We'll check that out once we go inside too. You got really all the features you could ever want. And this is all just the standard equipment that you would get on the base Mazda CX-5 with the signature all wheel drive edition. But so the MSRP on that vehicle, uh, standard equipment like this 
would be around $37,500, which is a really good bargain. This vehicle does have a couple options, one being this beautiful red paint. That's gonna run you about 600 bucks. Uh, the limited door sill that you're gonna see as we open this door is gonna be another 400 bucks. But other than that, that's about it. You're gonna come up to a price after destination of about 41,000 bucks. Still a pretty good bargain considering what you get. This vehicle is literally completely fully loaded and it's really nice and comfortable on the inside. But let's continue this walk around. You can see you have a little bit of chrome trim underneath the window panel. It's pretty nice. I like how it contrasts this black panel over here uh, for your C and B pillar. It does look pretty good. I'm not usually a fan of chrome, but this vehicle does kind of make it work. Over here, no push to open gas tank, but I'll show you guys where the latch is on the inside. Uh, back here, this is really nice. I like this taillight design. Uh, I like how it's almost like a projector bulb for your reverse light and your turn signal. But anyway, take a step back over here. You guys can see that you have your CX-5 signature all-wheel drive badge right there with your rear parking sensors underneath. On this side over here, you can see your Skyactiv G turbo badge. But anyway, let's take a step back. I also like the dual exhaust. But let's start this 2021 CX-5 signature all-wheel drive up and hear how she sounds. Alright guys, so that was of course the sound of the 2.5 liter turbo 4 cylinder sold by Mazda for the CX-5 signature. So let's pop this hood up if we can get the access to it, but okay. No struts unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with the prop rod. So I guess that's a negative for a vehicle that costs around 40000 bucks, but not a big deal. It's probably my first complaint so far, but there you have it. This engine is pushed to the left quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure why these things go in so much. It probably is going to aid with the liquid so it doesn't spill. But there you have it, of course. It is pushed to the left pretty well so it offsets the weight of the battery on the driver's side. And connecting the strut towers, you're going to see a pretty stiff frame support between both sides. So it's going to aid with your overall chassis stiffness and handling. And so with this configuration, you're going to make 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, as it says in the window sticker. But that's about it, guys. Let's shut this hood. I'll try not to burn myself with this really hot process, but all right. All right, guys, so let's take one last step back. Very nice styling, and I don't know if you guys can pick up the daytime running lights, and if they're blinking, I'm sorry. I don't know how to stop that, but that's about it for the exterior, guys. Let's check out the interior. All right, guys, so taking a step inside the CX-5, we're gonna notice that immediately up top, everything here is gonna be soft touch material. You're gonna have some stitch material up top. I'm not sure if it's leather, but it feels really high quality, continues all, through it, all throughout this door panel. Down here, definitely leather. Over here also, very soft leather trim. And I don't know if you can pick it up, but over here it's gonna be a black trim. You're gonna have some really nice wood grain underneath, but this is more like a chocolatey material. It does look really nice and it does contrast the interior pretty well. It's a really comparable color to this little wood trim. But beneath that wood trim, you're gonna have some aluminum and it does flow well with your aluminum door handle. And not the most resistance, they could have added a little bit more, but that's a nitpicky complaint. That's not a big deal. Over here, you got some storage in front. You got some piano black that outlines your uh, window controls and your mirror controls over here, four-way adjustable mirrors and uh, four-way power one-touch mirrors. See, so you press it one time and the whole mirror or window comes down. Press it up one time and it comes up too by power one touch. But for the front windows, you're gonna check out right here, we got some dual pane front windows that's gonna make the interior extremely quiet. You don't see that in this segment very often. And of course, power one touch on the way up. But down here, you're gonna see really good storage capability. You could probably fit a big gulp in here if you don't mind spilling due to this little angle. But behind it, you can probably fit a couple sandwiches back here, really impressive storage. Down here, uh, you can see that you got a really nice aluminum CX-5 nameplate. It is illuminated for the, the letters. Uh, and the number, <laughs> but this is also an option. It's gonna be a $400 option. You're gonna have it on both sides. But as far as the seats, look at these controls over here. These are gonna be really high quality, very luxurious feeling controls. Of course, you're gonna have 10-way adjustable seats with lumbar, and they are two-way memory seats. That's really nice if you're gonna be sharing this vehicle. But speaking of seats, you're gonna have your Napa leather seats. They're gonna be extremely soft leather. Uh, the bolsters are still gonna be pretty supportive. You're gonna have some perforated leather over here in the middle, and it's gonna be really, really nice because the cooled seats are very effective in this vehicle. We're gonna check that out in one second. But overall, super impressed with the seats. That's, some, that's something that this vehicle definitely exceeds at compared to its competition. I haven't driven too many vehicles in this segment, but compared to the Tucson, I would definitely give this vehicle the edge when it comes to seat comfort. But let's take a step inside 
the CX-5 and check it out. So first thing you notice is going to be this steering wheel. No, it's not going to be a flat bottom, but the leather is going to be extremely high quality. You're going to feel really good in your hands. It's not the thickest. I do wish that they maybe made it a little bit thicker, but again, the leather feels really good in your hands. Uh, the bolstering for the 10 and 2 is pretty notchy, so the 10 and 2 position is pretty good, and the thumb slots for your 9 and 3 are also nice. So the steering wheel overall, it's very nice to hold. Uh, behind the steering wheel, it does come in a little bit so it can grip your hand very nicely for the 9 and 3. Uh, so as far as the controls, you're going to have your volume controls over here with your voice commands right here as well. On this side, you're going to have your cruise control settings. You can turn on and off with your radar cruise right here. But as far as the horn, a uh, nice little Mazda badger over here. Nice surrounds too. It's not going to feel cheap at all. Press the horn. Very aggressive sounding horn too. You're not going to get one of those baby horns that you often get in this segment. But anyway, behind the steering wheel, you're going to notice your paddle shifters. This vehicle does have a six-speed automatic transmission. Maybe a little bit dated for some of you guys, but compared to most vehicles in the segment, remember, most vehicles here come with a CVT. So for the enthusiast drivers that want to feel their true gear ratios, this is still a relative improvement to what you would normally get in vehicles from the segment. But we'll turn down this air setting by one. Check out these cooled seats because these cooled seats are really effective. But behind over here, you can notice your turn signals. They're an interesting design. Uh, these are pretty loud seats too, but they do work phenomenally well. Uh, so these turn signals, they feel really high quality. They're an interesting design too. They haven't changed much over the years. The wiper controls are very similar, but you do get auto wipers. That's a nice feature for a vehicle in this price point. But this, this uh, steering wheel, it's not power tilt and telescoping, but you got your manual adjustments down here. But as far as your gauges, it's pretty straightforward. You got your 6,300 RPM tachometer. You can see your fuel economy right here. Um, over here, you got your speedometer. You can see your lane departure settings over here too. And when you're in manual mode, you can check out your gear that you're in over here. But you got your coolant temp over here. We're pretty good. We're doing pretty well with temperature. Pretty expected with a brand new car. Uh, you can see your gas level over here as well. And over here, you can see your gas level with a digitally illuminated miles to go over there as well. But over here to the left, you can check out your trunk release right here. Uh, you can see that you got your hill descent control settings. You got your uh, front facing camera and you can see your blind spots right here if you press it twice. We'll check that out. And it's, actually, we'll check it out right now. So you press the button one time. There you got your front facing camera. You got your 360 camera and check out that resolution. This is one of the best resolutions I've seen on any vehicle's camera. Truly, truly impressive. Press it one more time. Bang, you got your rear view camera too. Press it again. You can see your blind spot. So that's truly insane, guys. I, I haven't seen that on many vehicles. Definitely not in this segment, but press it one more time. You go back to your original settings. You can check it over here. You could also turn off your parking sensors if you would like to for one reason or, or another. Lane departure warning too, you can shut that off. Down here, you can see that you got your gas tank release right here. As we mentioned, uh, this vehicle doesn't have a push to open gas tank and you got your hood release right here. But that's about it for over here. You can check out uh, your overall display. So we'll check it out right here. So your 10.25 inch display, pretty straightforward. We haven't been connected with navigation yet. This vehicle doesn't have the SD card. If you press the button, this is just wall that comes up. You're gonna get your compass. But over here, you can see your communication settings. That's basically your phone, your messages, entertainment. So music settings and your overall information. So you can make your adjustments such as fuel efficiency monitor, you can see your vehicle status monitor and all that. So when your vehicle needs maintenance, it does alert you, which is nice. But we're gonna go back to the home settings, uh, press home one more time, you're back to this original screen. But down here, you can see your vents uh, next to your start stop button and you got the wood trim that goes all throughout this interior. And above that, you can see on your dashboard, you got leather wrap trim all throughout the bottom part of the dashboard and even up top. You're still gonna have some soft touch plastic going all throughout the top. But over here, you can notice that there's a little cubby. That's gonna be housing your heads up display. I don't know if I can angle the camera so you guys can pick it up, but in there, you can see that you got a nice heads up display. It's not the largest, but it is nice that it's not intrusive and you can still see very important information. And if you can notice over here, this vehicle also has a Bose sound system and it does sound really, really nice. But down here below the vents, of course, you have your hazards right here with your start stop. You do get a heated steering wheel here too. So for colder climates, very nice. And for hotter climates, we get the cool seats and I'm using them right now. Very nice to have, definitely not complaining. This vehicle is very, very luxurious. And again, the seats, super, super comfortable, extremely impressive. But other than that, guys, of course, you got auto climate. The dials feel really high quality, great resistance. Uh, cubby over here, no wireless charger. It would be nice if they added that, but Huge storage, you can fit a bunch of stuff. You can fit like three or four phones at least. Uh, in here, you got your 12 volt where you can throw your radar detector in. If you guys can pick it up right there, but we'll shut that up. Uh, back here, you have your gear selector. This of course controls your six speed automatic transmission. Uh, you can check out your rear view camera. We already checked out the camera, but we'll check it out again. 
Uh, you can put the car into drive, push it to the left. You can use your little slap stick where you pull back one time, you go up a gear, push up. You're down in gear, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's nice that they gave you that. But we'll put it back in park for now. Uh, next week, you can notice your sport mode. So you push it up one time, you're gonna be in sport. You pull it back one time, you're back in normal mode. That's the only modes you have. You keep pulling it back, there's no additional modes behind. It's only sport and normal. Uh, but that's all I personally would ever use, so definitely not a big deal. As we go for a drive, we're gonna start in normal mode and then put the car in sport and see what the differences are. But this whole tri trim on the outside, it's gonna be piano black, so you're gonna wanna keep your cleaning accessories at hand. But on the outside, I really like this little chrome trim with brushed aluminum around the gear selector. It definitely makes it look very high quality with more of this little chrome, little silver on the outside. But on the outside over here, where your leg's gonna touch, this entire area is stitched. That's really impressive, so you're not gonna have to worry about your knee hitting any uh, hard areas. Everything you're gonna be touching on this vehicle is gonna be soft. You're not gonna be feeling any hard touch materials anywhere on this vehicle outside of possibly the frame even the frame on the dashboard is going to be soft like that's what i'm saying guys this vehicle is extremely extremely high quality behind the shifter here's your sound settings which is nice even your passengers can control the sound very easily without being inconvenienced you got your infotainment display right here you can press this button and go home you got your nav right here music settings uh back settings and your favorites right here uh, but again this is not a touch screen so in order to control a screen you're going to be using this dial right here but this is sitting next to your electronic parking brake with auto hold. So if you're at a red light, you don't want to hold the brake. You simply press this button. And as soon as you press the gas pedal, it's going to automatically release the brake for you. But over here, you got your cup holders. They are rubber. They are rubberized. So it's going to be pretty nice. The stuff's not going to be flying around. You can throw some coins in there. But behind that, this really soft armrest, very nice leather, very comfortable for your arm. You open it up. Uh, you don't see that much storage because of this little tray, but the tray is lined with felt. You could probably fit an iPhone Pro Max in here, very large, and check out that storage. You could definitely fit at least like five, six bottles with no problem. Very good depth. You got your 12 volt in there, and you got two USBs. It would be nice if they gave you USB-Cs in this car too, but again, this is a 2021 car. I'm sure it's going to come on the 2022. But let's throw this tray back in here, shut this thing up. Um, and let's check out this glove box real quick. So you press this button, really high quality latch. Uh, you got a very nice uh, felt lined glove box. It's not the largest, you could probably fit uh, between uh, seven to nine license plates, I would say. Maybe you'll stop at eight, not quite sure, but overall, very nice quality. Uh, I found some hard plastic, by the way. Down here, you're gonna have some hard plastic, but that's literally about it. You're probably never gonna be touching that on a daily basis, but. Um, up here, you're gonna notice you do get a sunglass holder. That's not too common anymore. Uh, for the sunshade, I usually don't mention this, but we got a little bit of an extender over here. So if it's really sunny on this side, you can get this piece to block off some additional sunlight, which is nice. But other than that, guys, you got your sunroof. No, it's not a panoramic moonroof. That would be nice too. But again, that's a little bit of a nitpicky complaint. This will still do a great job providing light into your cabin. As far as the rear view mirror, it's gonna be frameless. You're gonna have your garage settings right here, and it is gonna be a power dimming rear mirror as well but that's about it for the front seat guys let's check out the back real quick see how much space is offered back there and the overall quality of the materials all right guys so step in the back seat of the cx5 signature edition so you're going to continue with your soft leather stitch trim over here very high quality very nice feeling material with your wood trim underneath you're going to have some aluminum down here too very nice uh, integrated with your aluminum door handle this one actually feels like it has better resistance than the front seat which is an interesting overall design uh, but again, not a big deal. Most people don't notice that, so who cares? Uh, over here, very soft leather padded trim. Uh, very nice. Towards over here, it may feel a little bit harder, but that makes sense. It's going to be the frame. So over here, you're going to have some rubberized storage with your power one touch uh, window. We're not going to test that out since the window sticker is on here. We don't want to damage that. Uh, but down here, you're going to have some hard touch over here surrounding your storage. You're probably not going to fit uh, anything crazy in here, but you could probably fit a 12 ounce with no problem. Maybe a couple snacks on the outside uh, with your Bose speaker underneath but down here you're gonna notice your aluminum plated cx5 nameplate again this is an option but it looks really nice when you step inside your cx5 but your napa seats they do continue over here super soft seats they are going to be perforated and heated we'll check that out in one second really comfortable very impressive seats definitely a thumbs up for mazda but let's take a step inside this cx5 and again i'm six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and my knees they, they are hitting the seat so the legroom back here not the most impressive I did have more space in the Tucson, 100%. So if you're six feet tall and you wanna have uh, a vehicle that you can put people that are your size behind your seat settings without having to compromise uh, where you're sitting, this is probably not the vehicle for you. You might wanna go with a vehicle like the CX-7, maybe even the CX-9, uh, but for people that are shorter than I would say five foot 10, 
Um, this should be absolutely no problem at all. This should be more than plenty of space. Um, and again, I could compromise uh, my space as a driver and make my back passengers feel more accommodated or I could just sit behind the passenger. So not a really big deal. I'm just saying that for long trips, this isn't the most spacious back seat in the compact SUV segment. But as far as luxury, you got all the high quality materials you could ever want or need. One of the most impressive back seats in the segment as far as luxurious feel. You got a felt lined mat pocket over here. Uh, it's gonna be leather trim. You're gonna have leather on the back of the seats too. You don't see that very often. You do get vents, of course. You can adjust the vent speed right here. Uh, you pop this little center console right here, which is again, super soft leather and you got heated rear seats. This is where it's gonna be. You got this, there's no rubberized the tray over here for the cups, but not a big deal. You open this thing up right here. Uh, you got a little console, it's gonna be lined with felt. You can throw some stuff in here and you got two USBs back here for your passengers so they can charge up their stuff. But we can shut this up. More leather on top over here, very soft padded for your elbow. Very impressive guys. Every, everything in terms of luxury materials and feel about this car is absolutely incredible. And if you got small children, if you don't really care about putting six feet tall people behind your six foot tall self, this is the perfect vehicle for you. The materials here, again, super high quality, super impressive, uh, but that's about it for the back seat, guys. Let's check out the trunk real quick and then take this car out for a drive. All right, guys, so to open the trunk, you simply press the button over here and watch it open up for you. And immediately I noticed the trunk is, has a very large opening very nicely sized. The step in height's not the largest. It's not anywhere close to as low as the Tucson. If you guys notice, the Tucson level was at my knee level, and this vehicle is significantly higher up than my knee. But not a big deal, guys. It's still a pretty low step in height. It's, a, it's definitely lower than my hip. Uh, not a very big indent, but you do get about a two inch indent, so your stuff's not gonna be flying around like crazy, and these seats do fall down. 60 40 split definitely a competitive uh trunk area compared to the segment and you got some cutouts over here so you can throw some grocery bags without having to worry about them flying around but we'll take a step back check out the opening one more time very impressive if you put those seats down you can easily fit a 60 inch tv back here with no problem at all but we'll press the button shut this trunk up watch it close take a step back and let's take this car out for a drive all right, guys, so now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2021 Mazda CX-5 Signature Edition. Let's take it out for a drive. And the first thing I notice is, even in normal mode, the steering is gonna feel absolutely fantastic. You got really great feel. It's not gonna be the most on center. It's not gonna be like a Miata or anything like that, but compared to most vehicles in the segment, you're gonna have a huge upgrade in terms of steering feel. But stepping out to this road, just lightly on the gas. We're not gonna have anywhere to go with this truck over here, but lightly on the gas, going to about 2000 RPM. Very good throttle response. Even when the boost is not kicking in, you're gonna have really impressive pickup. And as soon as you get the chance, of course, we're gonna test out this vehicle's acceleration. I'm just giving you my initial thoughts. And also, you're not gonna hear just about anything. That truck was hitting all sorts of bumps and you don't really hear much on the inside at all. But let's take a step out into this road, normal mode. We'll lean, we'll lean into about a third of the way right here. Oh, wow, you got really good torque. We're in a residential area. We don't need to test anything out too crazy. Test out the brakes right here. Good feel in the brakes too, very impressive. And that heads up display, it's really nice to have. But okay, we got a little bit of an open road over here. We'll lean into it about halfway right here. Oh yeah, very good pickup. Wow, very impressive. And around 4,000 RPM, that's gonna be like the strongest part of this vehicle's acceleration. Wow, this road's a little bit rough. Uh, but okay, so on on like just on the bumps, you don't really feel much at all. Very composed suspension. Uh, lean into like, we're leaning to it right here on the gas. Woo! Yeah, guys. Okay, so the transmission definitely shifts way before red line. It just shifted me at around 5,000 RPM, while the red line is over 6,000. But speed bump a little fast. Super composed really impressive suspension guys one more speed bump coming up right here we'll hit it way too fast watch this boom nothing like it's a very composed suspension all right guys let's slow down right here we got a little bit of an open road should be a good opportunity to see how this vehicle can accelerate off the line but just leaning into it right here wow okay really strong off the line guys Woo! yeah this car can really scoot and uh, so we don't have to push it farther than that because the road's gonna get a little rough right around here. But I hope you guys get the point. There's no wheel spin, of course, this all-wheel drive system. It stays very planted. 
And with this 310 pound foot of torque turbo four cylinder, you have a really impressive surge of power. But okay, let's take a step over here into this road. Uh, head over to a little bit of a curvy road that I know in this little area. But again, very good low end torque. You could just be tapping on that gas pedal. We're still in normal mode and it's just, it, it has very good power guys. Very capable SUV, especially considering the price point. But we'll throw it in the sport right here. Uh, see what changes up. So immediately the transmission puts you into a lower gear. It's gonna help you with acceleration, but it's gonna be a little bit annoying if you want a daily drive in sport mode, but okay. In sport mode, stepping out onto this road, wheeling into about halfway, ooh, way less lag. It feels really strong, going about 4,200 RPM. Really strong pull. Let's throw it into the paddle, drop it down to third, you get a nice little blip, throwing it in. It feels so good, guys, wow. And you get a nice turbo whistle too when you let off the gas on the brakes. Ooh, throw in second and coming out. Woo! A little bit of torque steer. That was surprising for an all-wheel drive car. But yeah, it's got enough torque to make the front wheels move around a little bit wiggly, but really impressive, guys. Look at those rims. I hope you guys can pick up the rims over here in this um, Infinity. That's some 30-inch rims or something. But all right, I hope you guys get the point when it comes to acceleration very impressive we're gonna try to turn around over here because this is a pretty good empty road we'll try to get a zero to 60 in uh see if you guys can get a nice little time with your stopwatch uh but other than that really impressive suv in sport mode the steering definitely tightens up a little bit you get more feel uh more weight definitely more weight definitely noticeable uh the acceleration improves the transmission definitely favors the lower gears but we'll line her up right here uh slow down right here get to get to zero I'll try to angle it so you guys can see the speedometer. Boom, punching it. Immediate, boom, we're off. Whew. And 60, so we don't have to push it any farther than that. Uh, but hope you guys get the point. It's a very capable SUV. Felt like it was around seven seconds. Pretty good time overall uh, for a vehicle in the segment, but right here, drop down a third, throwing the car into the turn. It feels really good, a little bit of body roll but we are going at a pretty decent rate of speed for a tight turn. But right here, really tight turn. We're gonna hit it really hot. And the steering is great, guys, coming out. Whew, when the boost kicks in, really impressive. But all right, guys, we don't have to beat this car up anymore. We'll throw it back into normal mode. Hope you guys get, to get the point, put it back into regular drive. Very fun SUV, very luxurious SUV. I'm very impressed with it overall. So if you're in the market for a top trim compact SUV, uh, you want all the luxury, you want all the bells and whistles, but you don't need a large SUV. So you're looking for something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more nimble, a little bit sporty, but you do want the space. You want to be a little bit higher up off the ground compared to a sedan. This is perfect for you. This is a great driving SUV. And for 2022, if you're willing to make the weight, uh, we are probably going to be seeing an improvement with the transmission. I know that you guys may not be loving the six speed automatic transmission, but uh, it's still an improvement compared to a lot of CVTs that we get in the segment. It's gonna have pretty good uh, short rate ratios for the street. It's gonna have a little bit sh too short ratios for the highway, which is why we're only gonna be getting about 27 MPGs for the highway. So um, I predict once they do make the upgrade to the eight speed transmission um, in 2022, that you're gonna see upgrades on fuel economy for the highway. You're gonna be seeing possibly 30 MPGs on the highway. But all in all guys, I'm super impressed with this 2021 Mazda CX-5. We're gonna turn around right here and head back to Tyrone Square Mazda. And huge thanks to them for making this review possible. Great group of guys. They have always helped me out when it came to car reviews. Um, if you're in the Florida area looking for a new car, I would definitely suggest checking these guys out. And if you're not looking for like a brand new, new car, they have a huge selection when it comes to used cars. They're one of the best used car, uh, used car dealers in the country. You can check out their website. They got some absolutely fantastic prices. What they do is they basically see where the blue book offer would be and they slash it down by a couple thousand bucks. Uh, very impressive strategy. They definitely make sure that um, whoever buys the car from them is gonna leave with a very good deal. No one's gonna go home upset over a Tyrone Square Mazda. So I definitely suggest checking those guys out. But other than that, guys, uh, really impressed with the CX-5 signature. All the bells and whistles, great driving dynamics, great look, beautiful look, really impressive. And it's gonna be updated soon, so I can't wait to see how it is. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I had a great time making this video. Hope you enjoyed it half as much as I enjoyed making it. If you're new here, please subscribe, join the WTF family. 
If you're already subscribed, thank you so much. You know, I have endless gratitude for all the subscribers. You know, the channel is just not possible without the subscribers, and I really appreciate all your guys' constant support. Uh, but other than that, guys, again, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I hope you all have a great day.